Hello everyone. Welcome to another one of our Facebook Lives. Appreciate you joining me today. It is February and this is So Confident Pants Month. We're making the Hudson pants with a variation to them. And those of you who are members of So Confident know that we've had our first shipment of pants kits shipping out and we are beginning to ship out a second round and we're still taking orders for those kits, all colors. So check that out. And we are also beginning to think about our March project, which is the third piece to the ensemble, which started out as a jacket in January, pants in February, and the t-shirt in March. And this is our Crane Street tee, new pattern. It looks fairly straightforward on the front, but the back is what is interesting. It has these interesting shapes, uh, curved shapes, opposing curves that attach to one another. And we're using a cotton or bamboo jersey for the main part of the garment. And then we're using a coordinating rib knit for the center panel. The sleeve is short. We'll get into the long sleeve version of this in April. But for now, it is a shorter sleeve. And it has a really unique neckband, which is two different or two separate binding strips, one for the front and one for the back. And they overlap at the, the um, corner. So for those of you who are members of So Confident, you know that we are taking pre-orders for the kit colors. And we have five kit colors right now. And that opened up today. This is the first day that you can pre-order your kit for March. We have the sage green, which goes with our um, oatmeal colorway. Red, which goes with our black, black and white colorway. We have the blue, which goes with our navy. And our dusty pink, which goes with our auburn. And our golden rod, which goes with our olive. So they're really fantastic colors, and we're just going to pull it all together for you. So by the time you make your project, by the end of March, you're going to have this whole ensemble to wear to something special or not. Notice that we uh, put our kits in that really fun uh, project bag, and so I'm hoping you're enjoying the use of your bags for all kinds of things. I use them for everything. So um, that is that launch today for the pre-orders, and then, of course, uh, March 1st, you will get your materials list and your pattern, and then I think it's on the 4th of March that the video actually launches for the March class. So we'll see you back then, but in the meantime, we are preparing the kits and getting them out the door. All right, uh, today we're going to talk about jackets. Well, I want to I tell you about something else first. Um, I, th I think one of the things I hear the most from sewers is I don't have time to sew. I don't know, my life's too busy, I've got too many things going on, people to take care of, places to go, things to cook, whatever. And I, I feel your pain. And so I've been, I'm going to be shooting the video for the March class this coming Thursday. And I have a new Crane Street tee that I made over the weekend, and I want some new Hudson pants to go with them. I have them all cut out and I thought, well, I'll leave work last night and go home. And uh, so, well, I went home and I didn't sew. Instead, I watched the Olympics, had a great time. It was Valentine's Day, thought maybe I should spend some time with my husband. We got dinner uh, out and we had a great time. So I did not sew. So I got up this morning and thought, you know, I need to practice what I preach. Instead of looking for that three, four, five hour segment of time to sew, I got up about 30 minutes earlier this morning and I thought I'm just gonna go down and, to my sewing room in the lower level of my house and I'm going to install two pockets. So I did that. I installed two pockets. I thought, well, you know, I've got a little more time. I'll just do the darts on the bottom. And this time I'm making the, the darts on the Hudson. So I sewed four darts. Well, now I know, I only spent 30 minutes this morning and I knocked that out, and it felt great to walk into my office this morning knowing that all I have to do now are five seams and finish the waistband, finish the hems, and I have a pair of pants by Thursday. So if I break up my sewing into small segments, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, five minutes, whatever. In fact, yesterday, I actually 
threaded the sewing machine. So the first thing I had to do was just sit down at my sewing machine today and start to sew. I didn't have to prepare anything. And I think we forget that we can just do those little small increments of things and get a lot of things done. I talk about a friend of mine in the old days when I had a fabric store, a retail fabric store, we would have sewing every Thursday night. And people would just come and make whatever they wanted to make, sew on something for fun. And one of our friends would come every Thursday night. She was regular, never missed a Thursday night, but she did not own a sewing machine at home. And she came to our store to sew. So she sewed for a couple of hours a week on Thursday nights. And over a period of a year's time, she would make several garments. And I thought, well, that tells you something. You don't have to have all the equipment sitting at home. You can just plan to join someone or set aside a, a little segment of time once a week and sure enough by the time a year is over you have something to wear. So that's my little uh, soapbox this morning. All right but today we're going to talk about coats. Uh, spring is sort of sort of around the corner around here. It's supposed to be in the 60s today I think so we're uh, and I think I heard a bird this morning, so that's always a good sign that spring is about to be here. But a couple of weeks ago, Deb walked in with her new Verona coat. So come on in, Deb, and show us this beautiful, beautiful coat. And I thought it was so incredible that what the fabrication that you had chosen and the pattern that you chose to go with it. So this is the Verona coat, which we introduced, uh, what, a month ago or so? Six something weeks. like that, yeah. six weeks or so. It's oh, both wow. in print and digital. The print version does have the longer version. Digital is short sleeve, short, not short sleeve, short, short length. Short length. The sleeves are a tad bit shorter on the jacket. Yes, they not are. They're more than three bit. quarters. So if you yeah. want long sleeves on the shorter one, you have to plan to do that. But all right. But you fell in love with this fabric when it walked in the door. I did. I did. Yeah. Well, it looks like you. Yep. So tell us about your process, how you chose your pattern, how you made your decision? Um, well, there was a Chanel coat that I fell in love with that was $4,000. Mm -hmm. And you didn't buy it? I didn't buy it. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, when this fabric came in, I was like, oh, that looks like that coat. And it was like the Verona pattern. It's like, that's it. So when this fabric came in the door, my daughter was actually here because we carpooled that day. She opened it up and I grabbed it and walked back to the cutting table. She's like, where are you going? And I was like, I'm getting this first. <laughs> I'm not letting this one get away. <laughs> That's true. We so. admire fabric when it comes in and then poof, it's gone. And then it's and then, gone. Oh, well, that yeah. would have been a good idea. But there's 34 yards of it left, so yeah. there's plenty for you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you lined it. I did well, line it. Well, you interfaced it and you lined it. And tell us about that. Yeah. So when I interfaced it, I only did the under collar here instead of the top one. In reality, I wish I had done both. Um, it looks okay sitting like this, but for some reason, when I get it up like that, it's just kind of limp. So the fabric had more drape than what I was expecting it to have. Um, so I did covered buttons, because fabric is just too pretty to put anything else with it. I was gonna make it longer, more like calf length, but it just didn't happen. So it's the regular length, but it's still longer on me than normal people. Yeah. <laughs> and then the lining, is actually a thermal lining. Um, so it's kind of a ivory color. Yeah, I but. think that people need to pay attention to this beautiful facing because the facing is curved and it's a non-traditional way of installing a lining because this is ap actually appliqued over the lining. Yeah. So you assemble the facing to the lining before you install the lining, as I recall, yeah. or the facing and lining. Right. Yeah, so that's a, so. a unique... Uh, method of construction. Yep, and it was my first time, so it's not perfect, but uh, it's now see You've made that classic <laughs> sewer's mistake <laughs> of Saying to us that because I think it looks perfect yep. and even if it didn't it still looks perfect Yeah, so uh, turn around got to get the full view It's you know, it's a really straightforward coat although it does have darts back here on the shoulder and that allows this garment to really fit nicely and hang beautifully so it's not riding back, it's not shifting on you, it's a really uh, nice treatment and very couture. This, the original coat uh, for this design was uh, based on a coat that Kathy Davis owned by Etro, an Italian designer, <clears throat> a design house, and 
I think one of the most unique aspects of this is the collar. And for instance, we, here's a short one. And you can see that Kathy made this, I think. I don't know if I made this or Kathy made this, to tell you the truth, I can't remember. She and I always argue about who made something <laughs> because neither one of us can remember. But at any rate, uh, we used uh, some contrasting fabric on the outer collar, another contrasting fabric on the inner collar, which is a fun thing to do. And then there's also this little band at the top of the pocket that you can use a contrasting fabric on. Uh, the lining on this one is coral color and kind of a hand-dyed silk. But here you can see, again, that shape of that facing, which makes it really beautiful. So I, there was a reason I pulled this out. Was it because of the contrasting fabrics in the collar? This is a yeah. very etro thing, is to make, there's where I was going with it. Um, <laughs> I'm losing it, I tell you. I, I, I was going to wear something completely different today, and I came in, and 10 minutes before Facebook Live, I was going to put it on, and you saw me downstairs yeah. scrambling to try to find it. Do you think I can find it? I have no idea. I even went out to my car. I don't know, whatever. So um, anyway, but Etro is famous for combining prints and solids and uh, doing some, not exactly patchwork, but definitely mixtures of fabrics, which you didn't do on that because the fabric is so stunning. Yeah. The fabric that you have on is by Angaro. Yes. And Angaro, Emmanuel Angaro, was a French designer. Um, he was really prominent, I think, or hit his peak in the 80s, and was known for very feminine um, prints mixtures, and he also mixed prints. So between the Etro inspiration for the coat and the Angaro fabric in this feminine floral, it's very, very couture. I mean, this yep. is really, in my opinion, high-end couture look. Um, it reminded me, I asked Erin this yesterday, um, my mother wasn't much of a sewer. Was yours? Yes. Okay. Mine owned a sewing machine and she allowed me to use it. It was set up in the hallway outside of our bedrooms. And um, she would, every year, she would make one thing a year, maybe two things a year, and she would always make me an Easter coat. Oh, I always had an Easter coat. And, and for some reason, this reminds me of that sort of spring yep. coat, although you've been wearing it I have this been winter wearing. because of the lining, yep. uh, that it's, it's warmer. If you wanted to make it really warm, you could underline it in thinsulate or flannel or something like that. So you could still have the, the spring look and the coloration of something really light and bright and fresh, but it would be warmer if you were to underline it yep. or interline it. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. So anyway, I think it's totally gorgeous. So That's I'm going to so make pretty. you uh, keep it here. Okay. You might as well tell us what else you have on, as long as you're oh. standing here. Okay. Because this is so cute. All right. So <clears throat> I have on the Picasso. Um, pants are a ponte. And this is a Picasso top. I kind of mixed in, what was that, November's? Yeah, I don't know. I've lost track. But this is the, the rayon and wool boucle yeah. so that is, we're so famous for. Yeah. So the seam in the front, I eliminated that, put it on the fold. And the same with the back and the pocket. And then over here, I did the dart like we did before, but I did it an inch instead of five-eighths to give a little bit more of an asymmetrical feel. That's a great idea. So, and yeah, and you did your overlapping seams did my overlapping all the way around, seams. but a tr well, but a pretty traditional neck binding. Pretty, yep, the neckline is well because it doesn't curl like the fleece did. Right. So I thought I'd just keep the neckline clean. Yeah. So, so that's fun. great. Looks great. Awesome. All right. Okay. I'm going to make you hand me a hanger, Erin. Uh, so I can hang this up. But, you know, this is just as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. So, thank you, thank Deb. You. Right. So we'll just hang this right up here so you all can just stare at it. Um, here is a, another option for you to make a spring coat. I have on the detour jacket and I've lengthened it. 
And this was a project from Series 9 of So Confident, where we took the detour jacket and we made it in three different versions. And so it's part of a compendium that we've put together now where you can make the variations of the detour jacket. But I also think this is a wonderful duster type short coat. Um, I don't have any buttons on this, which is by choice. I liked it this way. Uh, this has a little swingier look. The Verona is fairly straight up and down, but the detour has more swing to it and more movement and it has this unique yoke. Now here's one in Silk Dupioni, so it has a slightly dressier look. And Kathy Davis did this incredible hand embroidery on the yoke of this. I don't think we've shown this garment. But this was inspired by a garment that I saw when we were on our textile tour to London. And I took a, a snapshot of this garment in a store and brought it back, and Kathy did her rendition. And us per usual, you know, you start out with one idea and it turns out to be something else. But these, this is um, stem stitch and back stitch and French knots in embroidery floss, and I think it's just beautiful. And I think what's really interesting about this is there's not a single blue color in this particular fabric, but she's chosen blue and a, a bit of a red coral, none of which are pulled from this garment, but it really, really works. So this is a nice little piece of canvas for you to do something artistic, whether it's embroidery or applique, or the whole yoke could be contrasted. So remember the detour. And part of what you learn in this detour compendium is how to line the detour, which is also a little different method than a standard method. But this is a blue lining. We did that after she embroidered this, so we pulled the blue back into the garment. So that's a short detour, just like the pattern. And I have on a, a detour that's been lengthened. So let's talk about linings a little bit. Um, I did a class for Craftsy called Underneath It All. You can still sign up for that class. I think it's a good class. It's divided into lessons of interfacing, underlining, interlining, facings, and linings. And so I've just pulled out some of the information that's part of that lesson on linings. There are lots of things to use for linings. The gold standard, of course, is Bemberg rayon. And we carry Bemberg rayon in quite a number of colors. But it is rayon. It's called Bemberg because it comes out of a city, Bemberg, Germany, or something like that. The word Bemberg has a relationship to Germany and it has a relationship to where this is manufactured or originally was manufactured. Um, but it's smooth. And of course, the, the purpose of a lining is to conceal the inner workings of a garment. It covers up the seams, the darts, whatever, interfacing, all of that that's going on. So it cleans up the inside of a garment, but it also allows you to put a garment on a little bit easier because it's smooth and it doesn't catch on the garments that you're wearing it over. So Bemberg rayon is what I consider the standard. Now sometimes you can find um, fabrics that look like Bemberg, but they're not. This is China silk. It's lighter weight, has the same smoothness, very rich in color. Whenever I see China silk, I always buy some. Uh, we have a few pieces. They're not on our website, but uh, they're here, and we sometimes provide them when people request that we select a lining for them. And I like China silk very much. I don't use China silk as a fabric for a garment because it's not a fine fabric. I've, I've made the mistake of making garments out of China silk and I've poked through the elbows or the seams have ripped at the shoulders. It's just not a really stable, great fabric. But it's perfect for a lining because it's doing its job. Silk charmeuse is another fabric that I love for linings because it's beautiful. It looks a little bit like what Deb has used here in that it's shiny on one side and matte on the other side. So some of you may have a stash of fabrics such as charmeuse, various silks that you've 
collected over the years. You were going to make that silk blouse to go with that tailored suit that you used to, to make and wear. Um, I have all that, which I don't use anymore. <laughs> uh, then you can also, uh, from that same stash, pull out some beautiful prints. Here's a silk charmeuse print. And here's one that looks just like it in polyester. Now, of course, whenever you're using polyester, you're going to have more warmth. If that's an issue for you in a, in a warmer climate, then polyester may not be your choice. But there are beautiful prints available in both silk charmeuse, uh, crepe de chins, in silks. Now, you'll run into linings that are acetate. And again, we have a few of these. They're not on our website. These are better than some that I've seen, but acetates are not my favorite, but sometimes it's all you can find uh, in some of the stores, and they usually have beautiful colors, and it's just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just have a thing about acetate, I think. Uh, the lining that Deb used is called Kasha, and it is an insulated lining, and it's made for coats. We don't carry it. Not very many people do, but uh, I have found it at Vogue Patterns in, or Vogue uh, Fabrics in uh, Chicago, um, Brightex in San Francisco, places like that. But it is shiny on one side and dull on the other, but it's definitely heavier. It does have a good drape to it, but just remember that this is what you probably want to use if you really want a winter coat. If you're making something out of a knit fabric, such such as a ponte, let's say you were making a ponte jacket or coat and you want to have a beautiful lining on the inside, then to retain some uh, forgiveness and ease and stretch, you want to use a trico. And these are usually very wide, about 115 inches wide, and you can find them at places that sell costume fabric, dance costume fabric, I'm watching all the ice skating on the Olympics, ice skating fabrics, all of that. But I always like to marry the same amount of, or similar amount of stretch to a lining as the fabric that I'm using on the outside. Um, one, a couple of things, just a reminder when you're making a lining. If you're trying to make a lining that does, where you don't have a pattern for the lining, for instance, our detour does not come with a lining pattern. Now our Verona coat does, but the detour does not. So you always want to build in some ease uh, at the center back. So this is the back piece of something. I don't remember what it is exactly. So you can see that this is on the fold. And I've set this pattern piece off of the fold. Uh, so by, I've extended this by one inch uh, beyond the pattern piece. So my fabric is sticking out one inch beyond the actual pattern piece. And then I've done some stitching along this one inch line. And for about two inches, this is a straight stitch, normal stitch length, about a 2.4, 2.5. Then I break the stitching and start in with some machine basting, another couple of inches in about the center for uh, in the waist area, again, normal stitch length, another section of basting, and then a bottom area of normal stitching. So normal basting, normal basting, normal. So that when I press this, I'm pressing in this jump pleat, we can call it. And I would go ahead and construct the garment, and then I would take out the basting stitches, and that would allow this to have ease for movement. And just a reminder that we have a very signature technique for bagging the lining. And one of the things that we're really known for is this famous corner where the lining connects to the facing at the bottom hem. And normally, you know, you have your little jump here, and the lining is attached to the facing. But normally, right here, where there's this little seam, that's usually open. And you either have to slip stitch that or catch stitch that, 
close that up by hand. But we have a method of doing this totally by machine. So this is a machine sewn little seam and that's a real clean little corner. And that is in our bagging the lining tutorial. It's one of two methods that we have in that tutorial actually. I learned this from my friend Bernie Holstein, who used to work here in Topeka and now I think lives in Colorado. But she taught me this technique and I've never seen it anyplace else. So, some notes about lining. You know, you, it's important, I think, to take the time to do these fine details. I'm always in a hurry, it seems. I'm trying to get things out the door, meet deadlines, but to just sit back and really finish a garment beautifully is very satisfying. And I think that's one of the things I love the most about the Verona jacket is this beautiful finishing on the inside and the outside. Uh, we didn't leave any of the details out. This is another Verona that I also like that is in a little mat -lise, cotton mat -lise. and again some contrasting fabric on the inside and the outside. Now this is a, uh, I think a Mar uh, Anna Maria Horner quilt fabric, her famous little dot fabric on one side and a little blue um, jacquard on the inside and then this pocket has both of the fabrics that are trimming. Oh, and there's something in here. Maybe it's money. No, not my lucky day. Um, let's see what the lining is on this one. This is a, a, a hand-dyed silk charmeuse. Really beautiful. All right, so let's... Oh, one, one thing I wanted to show you while I have this out. Uh, I happened to pull this garment out of the vault. You know, we have a vault here of garments. And I it was hanging already over this mix-it tank, which I made years ago, and I'd forgotten about it. But I really like it. So this is linen. And then this is a piece of silk organza. And I did a little stitching, a little random stitching, and added this little uh, machine embroidery. This is the selvage of the fabric, actually, so I didn't have to hem the fabric. But I just added a little bit of stitching and embroidery to this for the little flounce. And I think it's a nice, nice touch to this. And I let it just hang out just a little bit, just to add a little bit of length to the garment. The Verona coat and jacket the pattern does call for, for shoulder pads. We are in a shoulder pad crisis around here. We usually get our shoulder pads from Japan and they are not here. And we don't know when they are going to be here. And so I was, one of the things I was gonna do and I forgot was to maybe find a source for you for shoulder pads. And I'll, I'll continue to do that and we'll post it. Um, but for the moment, we just don't have any shoulder pads and no date for when they will be here. So I'm really sorry about that. Now, Deb did not put shoulder pads in her coat, just as an FYI. Uh, a couple of these jackets do have shoulder pads, but she chose not to. And um, I think it looks just fine on her. So it, you don't have to put the shoulder pads in this garment. But let's look at some fabrics. We have three fabrics that just came in, and they all are Angaro fabrics. So we buy fabrics sometimes from a gentleman who goes to France or Italy, brings back fabrics, and these are three of the fabrics that he brought back for us. So the fabric that uh, Deb's coat is made out of is this one on the bottom. You can see it has Ungaro on the selvage, Paris, although the fabric's made in Italy. The house of Ungaro is in Paris. And this is 78% wool, 15% viscose, and a little bit of nylon polyamid. And there's a texture to this. Maybe I should show you the coat up close. There's a, um, a jacquard type texture to this that is really beautiful. It's a raised design. Can you see that? Yeah. The background? The light's shining on it. Should I move it? No, I think we're good. Okay. And then, so the, this peach, pale peach background with these beautiful lavender flowers and, and deep blues. Okay, so that's the texture of that one. The next one is 
Well, the tag is gone, so I'm not sure what the fiber is. Um, hmm. But again, Ungaro, made in Italy. This time it is a soft, pale, icy blue-gray. And it does have an additional little print on it of pale, pale, actually this is not a print. Yes, it is a print. Um, of a soft, soft gray-blue. And then it's popped with these beautiful citrus green flowers and a little bit of lavender. So you have this polka dot background, so to speak, on a textured background. I mean, the weaves of these are just incredible. And the weight of them, you know that you're touching something that's special and something that's come from a couture house. So this is not just off the bolt fabric. It's really quite exquisite. And this one is wool and viscose and a little bit of polyester. Um, this has a softer feel. It has a twill weave to it in a beautiful just off-white, good old off-white, again with all the lavenders and purples. I think we must have been into purple that day, but this would have been part of a spring collection of Angaro. And Obviously, there's a relationship of scale and the bringing out of the purples and lavenders in all of these. So if you want to make yourself something really beautiful, I mean, I, w I was thinking, you know, if I, have a, if I had a wedding to go to this spring, this would make a beautiful uh, overpiece to a wedding. Uh, but Deb wears her coat literally every day as well. And so I, I admire that when you make something that special that you're willing to just put it on and wear it every day. And these are the kinds of fabrics that are gonna last you forever. And maybe even hand me down pieces to people who you love. So I pulled out a couple of other things that I thought would be fun. Uh, since we had the Silk Dupioni Detour, I pulled out a Silk Dupioni that's printed. You don't see these very often. This is somewhat of a tw uh, twall type uh, design. This is actually upside down a little bit, but it's a sprig of greenery, although it's in pinks. Uh, oh, no, it's not. This is the correct way because here's a rooster. Oh, I don't think the rooster would be upside down. And a few little birds uh, on this vine motif. I think it's really special. And then this is a piece uh, whenever you see this selvage on a piece of fabric, you know that it is from uh, a manufacturer called Rotti from Italy. And this is viscose with a little bit of polyester, and it's a uh, viscose and poly sateen. So it is printed, but it has this gorgeous satin flavor to it in amazing soft, soft pinks and teal. And that's just another designer fabric. And I don't have the designer's name on this, but it comes from the same, same gentleman who shops for us and finds these beautiful things. Uh, I think this has a, a really hand-painted look to it. And we were talking about, uh, Aaron and I were talking about floral fabrics the other day where, you know, there's a explosion of floral fabrics out there on the market, but so many of them have regular motifs lined up, particularly in the quilt world, where we see beautiful fabrics that are quilt fabrics, but they don't translate to garments all that well because they are so regular. Well, this is now, this has a repeat, and the flowers are beautifully placed, artistically placed, and it makes a lot of difference in how it's presented. Same way with all of these, you know, little sprigs, big sprigs. This one, I think, is probably upside down, but... All right, any questions? Did you want to show the polka dot? Uh, oh, yes, linings? yes. So again, we have linings, and we have Bemberg rayon. We, we purposely ordered this particular color of Bemberg rayon in as a fantastic colorway for all three of these Angaro fabrics. And this is the width of it. Uh, it's uh, like 48 inches. It's wider than 36, I think. I can't remember now. Uh, but at any rate, Bemberg rayon, and again, we have lots and lots of colors. And then we have a couple of novelty linings that I think are a lot of fun. Uh, this is a polka dot. We have another one that's a dark pink background. But this is a really fun thing to think about using for a lining as well. Again, it's wider. So. 
Okay, um, we have a lot of questions about your jacket. They want to know what the fabric is. The fabric is rayon crepe. And you lined it. And I lined it. Mm -hmm. Good old black lining. And is that a tutorial? Or? Yes, this is this Series 9 So Confident Detour Compendium. I think it's the first quarter. Um, so. Yes, first quarter compendium. So uh, this is a, uh, I show you how to lengthen the pattern to make it this length, how to line it. Uh, see, the first, the, this is the first one of that year, um, Series 9. So this was January's product project and then the learning uh, was all about lengthening the pattern, how to sew this um, yoke, and how to line it, which was no easy matter actually to figure out, but once you figure it out it's easy. And then the second month was the garment I was going to wear, which was um, underlining and Hong Kong seam finishes, and the third one is making this into a vest. So those are the three projects that are in that compendium. I'm wearing it over uh, my Picasso pants, just like Deb, in black ponte knit. So for the um, polka dot lining, um, do you think it would create static? Is it polyester or what's um, You said it. I don't know what this is, but I don't think it's polyester. Um, I don't know why there's no tag. I suspect that it's rayon, but I can't really tell you for sure. I'd have to look that up. Well, static is create, can be created by a lot of things. Um, and I always, there are anti-static things that you can, products that you can use to uh, kind of get rid of the static, but I can't tell you whether this would have static or not. I'm not clinging to it now. But. So I finished my detour jacket, but would like to line it. Can I do it after, after I finished it? Um, Yes, you'd have to release the yoke, but yes, I think you can. Okay, the um, teal floral sateen on the top, Yep. Um, what would you make out of it? What I would make either one of these coats. I would make the Verona jacket or coat, the Detour jacket or coat, you could make a Tremont jacket. I see it as a jacket. I mean, I mean, in another kind of world, you would make a gown. You know, a strapless, full skirted, ruched gown, but I'm not wearing those kinds of things. So in my life, I would be making a jacket or a coat. And it could be, um, the Tremont would be beautiful, Verona, Detour, um, Those are probably the highlights of those three jackets, I think. I think it's a jacket. Now, it would make a gorgeous skirt, like a, a wrap skirt, like an, um, or an Eighth Avenue skirt. It'd make a really beautiful dressy skirt, kind of long. Okay, so the, the mix-it tank um, with the organza on the bottom. Uh -huh. Um, is that a single or a double layer of organza? Single layer of organza. Okay. Uh, does the Verona coat have the same corner lining tutorial in it? No. This, because of the way the facing is appliqued, that's a different connection there. Yeah, since this is appliqued rather than, so the process is different, totally different. So no, the only place that shows up for us is in the Brando jacket, I, or see, not the Brando. Um, don't we have it in a pattern more recently? Maybe not. I feel, I feel like we do. But it's not the Brando? Um, I think it is the Brando. Yeah. The Brando jacket, I believe, is our only pattern that has that technique. But that technique is in the bagging the lining tutorial. Mm -hmm. 
Does Bimberg have a right and wrong side? Not that I can tell. Does it matter which side you use as long as you're consistent? Correct. When will the new t-shirt pattern be available? March 1st. By the way, it's named after my old junior high. <laughs> There's a reason for every name that we put on a pattern. We, uh, Bessie put together a list of all of our patterns yesterday, which we hadn't done for a while. And um, we all were blown away by how many patterns we have. We have almost 100 patterns between digital and print. And I was shocked because that's double what I usually throw out there as a number. So we've really been building our library. That uh, piece that she's put together, I'm hoping will be something you can download from our website and print out. Um, for the Verona, did Deb um, make a size larger or do you recommend making a size larger for a coat? Well, this, the Verona coat is not oversized. And so if you think, now she had hers on over a fairly heavy Picasso. I didn't ask her about sizing on this. Um, we can do that and post it. I would probably think about that on the Verona if I were going, know, knowing I was going to wear it over a sweater or a couple of layers. It's, now the detour, no, I wouldn't. But the Verona is just not so oversized. And it's not a, it's, it's a, it's a two-piece sleeve. It's not a slim sleeve, but it's not a full sleeve. So it's, it's pretty normal. And do the sleeves run long? No, the sleeves do not run long. I'm looking for more questions. A lot of good comments about your jacket or your coat, Linda. Thanks. <laughs> I love this coat. It feels like a million bucks on. There's something about a lining. It just, it flows better. It's like lining draperies or not lining draperies. You know, when you go to the store and buy cheap draperies at Target and they're not lined, you hang them, they look like they're not lined or they, look, they don't look luscious. And then if you take that same sort of not very great fabric and line it and hang it, it changes everything. So sometimes it's the interior and the lining of things that can really make things more beautiful. Same way with clothing. Will the lining tutorial apply to the flat iron coat? Uh, the flat iron coat does not have a facing in the pattern, but you could create a facing. The, line, the method in the tutorial works with a facing. So if a garment does not have a facing pattern, you would make one, and then it works. On the, on the flat iron, if I were lining the flat iron, um, I would probably line to the edge and bind it, frankly. For the Verona coat, can you make it single-breasted and wear it without buttons? Well, sure, you can just cut it down. Yeah, find the center front and extend it out however much and eliminate that, sure. So back to the mix-it tank, is the embroidery done by hand or by machine? Machine embroidery on the mix-it tank. Back in the day when I was doing that. Do all lined garments need to be dry cleaned? Yes. Leave off the word lined and the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> We can tell where your loyalties lie. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hammered for that. <laughs> oh, what's new? <laughs> it's a Tuesday. Okay, so where um, where did you get your fabric um, for your coat, Linda? Uh, this was a fabric that we had. Uh, it came from the same gentleman who buys these fabrics for us. Actually, uh, it's an Italian fabric. I don't remember who the designer was. 
And which fabrics on the wall are designer? Um, well, these three are the Angaro, one, two, three. This, I don't know the origin. This is a designer fabric, but I don't know the designer. But the mill is Rotti, R-O-T-T-I, a very famous mill that makes designer fabrics. Um, can you show the blue Crane Street tee? The color looked much lighter than the web photo. Yeah, this is, this is the color. The web photo is a little bit darker. So it is showing pretty light um, right now compared to okay. like, kind of look around the camera. That looks darker gray. back there. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is more, it is kind of a gray blue. Yeah. Um, but it's very, it's a nice soft blue. Yeah, it has a little gray to it. Mm -hmm. What if you're allergic to dry cleaning chemicals? You're not a dry cleaner person then. <laughs> <laughs> there are some, aren't there certain dry cleaners? Yeah. Not here, of course. There are actually. There are the old dry cleaners, and then there are some newer, uh, more technical, technologically advanced, uh, more sustainable dry cleaning. I, I suppose those exist in larger cities. Mm -hmm. I know Kansas City has that for us. I don't think Topeka does. I'm not sure about that. You'd have to check that out with your own individual dry cleaners. There are dry cleaners. There was one in San Francisco, I remember, that you know, would, would, uh, people would send their garments from all over the world to this particular dry cleaners, uh, fancy dresses and fur and all of that. So there are specialty dry cleaning companies, but I, I'm not sure of the, uh, I, I would have to research that in, I think you would have to research that in your own area. Yeah, not everybody's up for dry cleaning. I, I get that. And I, we laugh about it around here because um, my position on dry cleaning is um, if I have invested a lot of money and time, time more than money almost, <clears throat> in building a shape into a garment, I'm not going to let the washing machine destroy that. My casual garments, wash them all day long. T-shirts, pants, tops, whatever. But a line jacket that you've built a roll, let's say, on the collar, you've, you've set in the sleeve beautifully, I'm not, I'm not going to wash that. It destroys it. So. I think this goes back to adding the lining after you've completed the jacket. Mm -hmm. um, so it says, I should I attach my lining to the yoke of my finished jacket? Are you talking about the detour? I, I assume so. Yes, the lining of the uh, detour is attached at the yoke. So the, um, so you can see that the lining is attached to the yoke, the bottom of the yoke. Um, is the new Crane Street T tight at the hips? No, it's not tied at the hips. Uh, you want to have a, a few inches of ease on the bottom. So you do need to measure that, perhaps, and reshape that if you need to. But it's not meant to hug the hips. It's meant to be loose. And how would you style the new tee? Well, obviously we're putting it with the Hudson pants and the Hudson pant variations. We're putting it under the sterling jacket. Uh, this is a tee that we're going to be wearing with two more of our patterns uh, this year in the program, a skirt and another pair of pants. Um, I think it can be uh, in casual fleeces and French cherries, loopy things, as well as fine, smooth jersey. So it can be a little dressier. It can be very super casual. It could be like a sweatshirt or it could be like a really nice shirt. Can you show the colors again for the kits? Sure. All right. So we have sage. And the kit comes with both the solid and the rib. We have red. This is just a good old red. Beautiful red. The blue you've seen. 
No, that color is showing up better. Now that shows up better? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you hold it up flat to or, or there you go. So I think that's a good shot of the color. Okay. Okay. And the <gasps> dusty pink. Blush, it's called. And the golden rod. Um, how thick is the rib? Is it like um, the one you have? We've had this rib before. Yes. Erin uh, um, made a red skirt out of this rib and a Eureka top, and I made a pair of pants out of it. So we've used it for other garments. It's, it's not heavy at all. It's not like a rib knit cuff or collar or something like that. This is very lightweight and works well with the jersey. So this is, in fact, this is a little bit drapier than the fabrics that it's working with. Let me get a full shot of the back. Okay. It has a really fun drape. Mm -hmm. If you look at the photos of it on the body. You mentioned some kits out of waffle fabrics for the sterling jackets. When will that be available? Um, I'm not sure of the exact date, but we're working on it. I would say in the next couple weeks. We're, we're trying to get uh, Crane Street kits moving first to complete the actual commitment on So Confident and then the waffle kits will come. If you all want to come make kits, uh, we'd be happy to have you. <laughs> Come on, Jean. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. Um, what other sewing workshop patterns um, are similar and fit to the new tee? Um, well, we don't have anything that has that blue sawn back to it. So in terms of regular fit, um, it's... I suppose you could think about the um, Maison, the, it's not quite a swing tee. I don't know, what would you say? It's not like anything we have. This is more fitted in the you know, sleeve and up in the shoulders, yeah. which would be similar to like the and, and, the, or and the sleeve tee. is slimish. But um, yeah. the rest of it just has a completely different yeah, shape. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. If you're asking because of size, then I make the same size in this shirt as I make in every other one of our t-shirts, if that helps you. Mm -hmm. um, is the new t-shirt pattern both print and PDF? Right now it's PDF. It will be print. The, print. the printed patterns have not started rolling out yet. They are at the printers, but it's been a long transition, <clears throat> and we're still not there yet. I don't, I don't expect to see any printed patterns until late April or May, <clears throat> but we're working on it. But it will be in print, but for now it's PDF. Can the tee be made without using the ribbing in the back piece? Sure. The first one I made did not have ribbing. Um, now, it would be very difficult not to have the sections. That would be a whole new draft of a back pattern. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have the seams, but you can use the same fabric in all three sections. But the kit is that, But the kit has the insertion. Right. And probably not enough fabric to do all mm -mm. of the same. Can we pre-order more than one kit for the tea? Absolutely. No, I'm sorry, you can only order one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've already had orders this morning for more than one kit. Mm -hmm. What's the fabric content of the kits? Uh, there are three of them that are in cotton and spandex and two of them that are rayon bamboo and spandex, and the rib is uh, rayon of bamboo. We have multiple people offering to help make kits. Wow. <laughs> Rhonda, Jean, Yeah, I know, we're, we're in kit crisis mode here, so we're- <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> we've already, we already have four new people making kits, and we're trying to find a more full-time person to, or people to make kits. Is there a way to indicate when we don't want the project bag when ordering kits? Uh, 
uh, you can email us. I think it, it's very hard for us to, to distinguish that, though. I think right. when we're rolling we out, we may these or orders. may not be able to catch it in right. time. Right. Yeah, use it. It's it's a wonderful thing to use. Mm -hmm. I use them all the time. I put my painting mm -hmm. supplies in there. I carry things back and forth to the office. I store things in them in my house, in my kitchen, mm -hmm. in my laundry room. I mean, they're they're, they're very useful. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you'll find a use for it. Can the tea be made with long sleeves? Yeah, the long sleeve version will be out in uh, April. That's part of April's project, how to take this sleeve and lengthen it. Can the new tea be made in a woven? Can the new tea be made in a woven? No. Right. Uh, the back probably could, but not the front and the sleeves. Definitely not the sleeves. Yeah, I think you could insert a woven in that center panel easily. I'm not even sure about the top and the bottom. I think, I think the answer is no with the exception of maybe a woven in that center back. Mm -hmm. Do you know the percentage of the spandex? Um, that's something we can offer a link. Uh, no, but it's probably three or five percent. That's pretty standard, but I, no, I can't tell you right off. Maybe Betsy can look at it and mm -hmm. let you know. I am not seeing anything else. All right. Lots of good questions today. Okay. All right. So today's sale, this week's sale, is all the fabrics are 15% off. And the patterns on sale are the Verona, both print and digital. Remember, the print one is both lengths, and the digital one is the short length only, but you can lengthen it. Um, and the detour jacket, which is digital. And the tutorials are Bagging the Lining and the So Confident Series 9 First Quarter Compendium. Did I cover it all? I think I did. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Again, we'll see you next week.